Hi, everybody. Welcome to Philosophy 1250, Critical Thinking. I'm Dr. Robert Fudge, and I'll be your professor for this semester. Critical thinking is a branch of logic, which itself is a branch of philosophy. However, this is not a traditional philosophy class. We won't be looking at things like arguments for and against the existence of God, or examining the foundations of morality, um, or looking at the nature of beauty, or anything like that. Instead, critical thinking is a skills class. More specifically, we're going to be looking at arguments and explanations in ordinary language, and we're going to be learning techniques for how to identify, represent, and ultimately, and most importantly, how to evaluate them. The skills you'll be picking up here then will be applicable not only to philosophy, but to any discipline. Now let's look at the syllabus for the semester. As I said, I'm Dr. Fudge, and my office is room 140 in Lindquist Hall. Because this is a summer semester, I don't hold normal office hours. However, I'm happy to meet with you by appointment. You can call me on my phone at extension 7046, but again, because it's the summer, I don't get my messages very frequently. A much better way to contact me is by using the conversation tool on Canvas. Or if you have specific questions that you'd like to ask, please post those on one of the discussion pages. Now because you're watching this video, I take it that you've already found the link here. Once you've finished watching this video, please introduce yourself to the class by clicking here. This area, underneath all my contact information, will be a place where I will frequently post um, some information, various links, uh, study guides for the exams, and so on. Now some of you have already asked me about the textbook for this class. If you've gone to the bookstore, you'll see that there isn't an assigned one that they have on file. The reason for that is that we're using an electronic textbook called The Art and Science of Critical Thinking. Scrolling down a little bit on the syllabus, you can find the information for it here. In order to purchase the text, simply click here and that will take you to um, another site called Redshelf. Now the reason that I don't have this listed through the bookstore right now is that once you purchase the text, you cannot return it. I want to give you the opportunity to decide whether or not you're going to stay in the class before you purchase the text. So, I've actually given you a copy of the introduction and the first chapter of the book under the assignments list below. This will give you about a week before you make a final decision on whether to stay in the class before you actually purchase the text. Next we'll find the announcements. Because I periodically post announcements over Canvas, I would suggest that you set your notification settings to ASAP. You can do that by clicking on the account button over here on the left hand side and then choosing notifications. Looking at the course description, this is an introduction to informal logic, focusing on issues of logical form, standards of good and bad reasoning, and argumentative writing. The objectives are to improve your critical thinking and writing skills in the context of assessing and justifying argumentative claims. I then list the various course and gen ed learning outcomes, which I won't bother going through here, but you're welcome to do it on your own. Let's scroll down then to course requirements. First of all, each of your assignments will have a reading assignment and a lecture. You'll want to read the part of the textbook that's assigned and then watch the accompanying video lecture. Once you've done that and feel comfortable with the material, you will take an assessment quiz. Each of the assessment quizzes consists of five questions and there are 15 of them that will be administered during the semester. Each of these is worth five points. I will drop your lowest score, which means that your assessment quizzes will only be worth a total of 70 points through the semester. Because each of these is only worth about 1% of your final grade, you cannot make them up. The quizzes are administered over Canvas, they're open note, open book, and can be taken from any computer location. If you'd like, you can even take them with your classmates. Importantly, however, once you open a quiz, you have to take it. So in other words, don't think you can go and look at some of the quizzes and then come back to them. The next item under the requirements is your signature assignment. 
Many of you have probably encountered signature assignments in other of your Gen Ed classes. Each Gen Ed class here at Weber State has something called a big question and a signature assignment. The big question for this class is, what is the relevance of critical thinking to your discipline? The signature assignment then gets tied back to this big question and it will involve your interviewing somebody in your discipline on this question and writing a three to four page summary and analysis of the interview. I'll provide details of this assignment later in the semester. Next, we have exams. You will be administered three exams during the semester. Exam one will be worth 100 points. Exam two will be worth 50 points. And exam three will be worth 150 points. These differing point values reflect the number of chapters that each of the exams covers. These can be taken at any of the Weber State testing centers, and you'll be allowed two full pages of notes, front and back, for a total of four sides to take in with you for each. The testing center collects and keeps notes after students finish their exams, so if you want to have a copy for yourself, you'll want to make an extra one. If you live outside of the testing center service area, that is outside of Weber, Davis, and Morgan counties, you can request to set up a proctor to administer your exam. You really need to do this early in the semester rather than waiting until the last minute. I provide a link here that provides more details. Now you'll notice that I also provide a link to the testing centers page. Let's look at that quickly. You'll notice that Weber State has a number of different testing centers. One of the more popular ones in the Student Services Building is actually closed from June 19th through July 20th. So, you should plan accordingly. As you click through here, you'll notice that the different testing centers have different hours. These hours are not the same as they are during the normal school year. So, it's your responsibility to know when the testing centers are open so that you can take your exam on time. If there's an emergency that prevents you from taking an exam, please contact me as soon as possible to make alternate arrangements. I will accommodate you if I deem your circumstances sufficiently serious. If you know that you must miss an exam because of vacations or athletic events or whatever, then you can make arrangements with me ahead of time to take the exam early. Finally, note that each of the exams is open over a range of dates. So exam one is available uh, Friday, July 5th through Monday, July 8th. Exam 2, Friday, July 19th through Monday, July 22nd. And Exam 3, Monday, August 12th through Wednesday, August 14th. That should provide you plenty of time to take the exams. You'll notice that even during the summer semester, the Library Testing Center is open on Sundays. So if you choose to take an exam on a Sunday, that option is available to you. Okay, let's scroll down further and look at how your final grade will be determined. There are a total of 420 points possible during the semester, as detailed above and in the assignments list. Your final grade is simply based on this scale. There are some important dates that you should be aware of for the semester. These apply to all of your classes. The last day to drop any of your classes without a W is Monday, July 15th. The last day to drop classes with a W, or to select credit, no credit, or audit, is Tuesday, August 6th. And the last day of classes will be Friday, August 9th. The policy regarding academic dishonesty should be fairly straightforward. As specified in the Policy and Procedures Manual, cheating and plagiarism violate the student code. For our purposes, all exams must be completed on your own, and you must be the sole author of your signature assignment. As I stated earlier, you're welcome to work together on the quizzes. Any students found guilty of cheating or plagiarism are subject to failure of a specific assignment, or in more serious cases, failure of the entire course. Further, as per the policy, I will submit the name of any violator to the Dean of Students Office. If you have any questions about the policy, please ask. If for any reason the university is forced to close for an extended period of time, be sure to check this site for instructions. We recommend to all students that they sign up for Code Purple to be alerted to any sort of campus closures or any other sorts of emergencies. Okay, technical assistance. For any general hardware or software issues, 
please contact the Computer Support Help Desk at extension 7777 or c-support at weber.edu. Alternatively, you can also visit the Help Desk in Lampros Hall on campus. I believe that the Davis campus also has a Help Desk. For help with Canvas, contact WSU Online at extension 6499 or WSU Online at weber.edu. There's also a number of uh, helpful video guides that Canvas offers, which you can link to here. And there are some university resources that you might find helpful for any of your classes, including tutoring services, student support services, and the Student Success Center. Finally, if you require accommodations for um, any sort of disability, please contact the Services for Students with Dis Disabilities office. I'm happy to work with you on any of your needs. Now let's look at the, the assignments list. All of the assignments refer to the textbook, The Art and Science of Critical Thinking. You'll notice that the assignments are broken down by week. We're going to be covering a chapter a week, except for chapter three, which will be spread out over two weeks. So week one has three assignments associated with it. Argument basics, classifying arguments, and implicit premises and conclusions. You'll notice that for the first assignment, you are to read the introduction of the textbook, and then you're to read section 1.1, identifying arguments from chapter one. Now again, notice that I have links here to both the introduction and to the chapter. There's also a link here for an accompanying video lecture. Once you're done reading the section, watch the video lecture. Then complete exercise set 1.1 and check your answers against those that I provide here. If you have any questions about the material, and I'm sure that you will, please post any questions to the discussion page. Finally, complete the first quiz. This will be due by the end of the day on Sunday, June 30th. Then move on to the next assignment. Now, as I said, we'll be covering chapter one during week one, chapter two during week two, and then there will be an exam available July 5th through July 8th. And we'll continue like this through the semester. Okay, the last thing that I want to do is take a look at the textbook. Here's the textbook on Red Shelf. You'll notice that there's a sidebar here that includes a table of contents. So you can open up the different chapters and click and go immediately to um, different sections of the text. Okay. So we just talked about the first assignment, identifying arguments. You'll want to read through this, and you can scroll through the text by clicking on these arrows here. Um, or if you're looking at this on a uh, tablet, then of course you can just swipe. Okay. okay, we're gonna scroll back to the first page of this section. And you'll notice that here, there's actually a link to the video lecture. In the free copy of the chapter that I gave you, there's not an active link. However, in the online textbook, there are active links at the beginning of every section. So here's section 1.2, classifying arguments. Once again, there's an active link to the video. Let's go ahead and pull one of these up. These videos are available on YouTube. Is there good arguments? You'll notice that the videos are all closed captioned. If you don't like closed captioned, you can turn it off. Now, I'm going to close the table of contents, and you'll notice that there are a number of tools available that you can use for this text. You can put in bookmarks, you can put in notes and highlight things, you can create your own study guide, create your own flashcards. There's a lot of interesting things that you can do here. You can even print part of the textbook if you choose to read it that way. There's one more thing I should mention about this class. There are a lot of you enrolled. As of right now, there are about 90 of you. I'm going to break you up into a number of discussion groups. There's going to be about 10 to 15 people in each of those groups. Throughout the semester, I'll be posing questions to each of the groups, and you can not only answer my questions, but also provide feedback to one another. You should really think of yourselves as resources for one another. That's one of the great things that we can do with an online class. Even though you might be scattered across the state and indeed across the country, 
um, you can actually work with one another over Canvas. Okay, so that's it for the introduction. Please go and introduce yourself to the class and get started on the first assignment.